Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and good morning or good, good evening, whatever your time zone is and you are watching my session. I am Dr. Aksali, one of your mentors for the part one and uh, that is the uh, for the MRCPCH for PENTAS. So I welcome all of you to our another session of the recalls and today we are all we are going to talk about all about that is about uh, will be uh, regarding infectious diseases and among infectious diseases we are going to talk about all the four recalls. Let me just uh, tell you one thing before starting uh, one uh, our session today that uh, uh, regarding your infectious diseases or your infections, uh, it is going to make most of your exam questions for the FOB. Uh, you, you will also get some questions from the infections in the task, but that may be merely about three to four. But it will make a, make a great chunk of your FOB examination. So that's why it is very important to have a very good understanding of all of these scenarios. And don't ratify the answer. One, I will just want you to uh, give one advice that don't ratify the answer. Just have a good concept that what is it actually they are asking and what is the concept behind it, what are what the guidelines says, and uh, what is the actual disease behind it. And then just go with, uh, with it. So we will come, uh, cover today all the past recalls starting from the FAB um, uh, February 2024 to onwards backwards we will go and uh, in the uh, uh, I just want to say one thing that in some um, uh, papers the questions are repeated many times so once I have discussed one question in one paper I have not added that even if it is repeated in the like uh, uh, in other papers. So that's why it is possible that you may get no question in one, uh, like suppose in uh, June 2023, it is possible that I do not show you any question. It's because uh, that is because most of the question, on, almost all of the questions has been repeated and I already have discussed them in one or another paper. So it is possible that you may not get any question or maybe do not get any big heading of uh, this uh, paper and uh, you may ask you that you did not you did not discuss this paper the reason is that if uh, you did not see any big heading of like uh, fab 2023 or 2022 or something like that then uh, the thing is that i have already discussed all of the questions which has come into uh, that uh, that paper so let's just start with it starting with our first uh, paper that is going to be the for your fab 2024 so uh, the first question is that uh, what is a notifiable disease? So you may know that as we are going to talk about our infectious diseases and some of them are notifiable to some public health institute and some of them are not. But as we are working, all of our, we are not in the same region. Some are in the Asia, some are in the Europe and some are in the Arab countries and like that. So uh, in all the different regions, we have different diseases which are notifiable to our government or our public institutes public health institute so uh, uk has uh, issued a their public health institute issue a issued a, a list of your notifiable diseases uh, which you need to rememberize or you have to remember them so this is how you, they are going to ask you which is which one is a notifiable disease so the option uh, one is the pertussis rsv or the adenovirus so you should know that which one is a notifiable disease if you know that uh, a list of the diseases which are notifiable in the uk so among that, if we talk about uh, the answer is that the pertussis is a notifiable disease, not RSV, not uh, adenovirus. So the answer is the pertussis. And uh, let me just show you what are these notifiable diseases in the UK. So you need to know that food poisoning, hemolytic uremic syndrome, this is also a very common one. And they have asked this multiple times in your past, these uh, different exams. Similarly, infectious bloody diarrhea, group A, streptococcal invasive disease, scarlet fever, malaria, specifically meningococcal septicemia, measles, rabies, rubella, tetanus, tuberculosis, whooping cough, pertussis. You see, you say here, this is whooping cough or the pertussis, which is a notifiable disease. It is present in the list. So you need to notify this disease in the UK. Then acute viral hepatitis, mumps, encephalitis, meningitis, poliomyelitis, botulism, cholera, diphtheria, enteric fever, and the brucellosis. So you need to remember most of these diseases uh, because uh, hemolytic uremic syndrome, whooping cough, that is a pertussis, enteric fever, and the meningococcal septicemia. These four I have seen repeatedly in the many past exams. So you need to remember all of these, especially these four ones, 
uh, to know that these are the notifiable diseases in the UK. And this table is very important. You have to memorize it. Just memorize it. And these are the pet straightforward questions. So let's move on to our next question. And this is 18 months old girl, okay, presented with a three days history of being unwell. She is feverish and off her food. She has a rash which covers her entire body and is variable but more marked when she is febrile. Okay, this is the fever with rash. Her cheeks are red and is pale around mouth. Her tongue and the lips are the red and pus is noted on her tonsils. Fever is recorded up to 38.5 degrees centigrade and she has a heart rate of 150, respiratory rate of 40 and CRT of 2 seconds and total WBC count is 15 and the neutrophils are 11,000. So what is the diagnosis? You have the option scarlet fever, infectious mononucleosis and the varicella. What do you think? Can the varicella, that is the chicken pox, present like that? Uh, it's uh, They have said that the fever and the rash. She has a rash which covers her entire body and it is variable. But chicken pox and the varicella, it does not have the variable rash. It has the pet fluid-filled vesicles. We just, uh, we just start from the face and then just go downwards so and along with the prodrome of the fever usually in the varicella we have about 20, 24 to 48 hours of the fever before the rash occurs and then the varicella lesions they started to appear on the scalp and then the face and then they just spread on the trunk first as the erythematous they are the papules one which then evolve to form our fluid filled vesicles which then crusted uh, afterwards so uh, and the, these this varicella it does not have the red cheeks and the paler around the mouth and the tongue or and the lips are not red showing the strawberry tongue Similarly, pus is noted on her tonsils. This, this is not a typical one for the varicella. So the varicella is less likely. Uh, then infectious mononucleosis. How the infectious mononucleosis, which is going to be caused by your Epstein-Barr virus, EBV, and how it does present, it, it presents with fever and the malaise, just like this baby. And also there is going to be the like uh, pharyngitis and the tonsillitis in these infectious mononucleosis also. But it also has a lymphadenopathy and uh, this infectious mononucleosis usually have the splenomegaly and you have the petechiae on the face, but uh, it is not common to have the rash in the infectious mononucleosis. They do get the rash, but only about like 5% of the cases and that is maculopapular rash and that is also not with the fever. Uh, usually fever settle down and then you get some uh, lymphadenopathy and the tonsillitis and also the hepato or splenomegaly. But this is not the typical one. Typical one is, I think this is the case of the scarlet fever because you have this, you see pus is noted on her tonsils. Most likely it is going to be a group A streptococcal pharyngitis, which also her lung, her uh, tongue and the lips are also red, which means it she or baby is going to have the strawberry tongue with group A streptococcal pharyngitis. Along with that, cheeks are red and the pale is around her mouth. That is typical called uh, typically called as a circum oral paler. That is the paler around the mouth and that is typical for the scarlet fever along with the fever and the uh, rash that is covering the entire body. So the answer here is most likely is the scarlet fever. It is These findings are not the typical one for the infectious mononucleosis or the varicella. So these are not the, uh, these are the right option. The right option is scarlet, which is this scenario is showing the typical features of the, your scarlet fever. So what is basically scarlet fever? It is going to be caused by your group A streptococcal, which will cause the pharyngitis. And the, your rash is going to appear within 24 to 48 hours after the onset of the symptoms, usually starting be, uh, be, uh, begins around the neck and then spreads over the trunk and then extremities. It is going to cause you diffusely, finely papular erythematous eruption, which is going to produce a bright red discoloration of the skin, which blanches on the pressure and mostly accentuated in the creases of the elbow, axilla and the groin. The cheeks are usually often erythematous with paler around the mouth. So you see, these are the typical findings for your scarlet fever, which they have given in the scenario. And after three to four days, your rash just begins to fade and followed by desquamation, which is initially on the face, and then it progresses downward and often resembling with a mild sunburn. And after desquamation, your tongue uh, has uh, the reddened papilla. These become prominent and giving the tongue strawberry appearance, which they have also mentioned in your scenario. 
And if you go for the examination of the pharynx, then it is going to show you group A streptococcal pharyngitis with a pus on the tonsils. So you see all the features of the scarlet fever are present in your given scenario. scenario. So you have so your answer for the last scenario is scarlet fever. Let's move.